Giving this another shot. Hopefully I'm orientated right this time. Should say I screwed it up. Started doing this without um without a medium. Kind of messed up. I'm gonna have to make some. Give me a second. I'm disorientating this a little. All right. Put out a little bit more medium. 
camera fell. Great. This one here we have, it's fine. The only thing you can hear in the background is my water pen. Probably not picking it up on the mic. It's way too quiet in here. I have to start doing music or something. There's a couple. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Make sure this thing's still pointed, right? Squeeze in where I think I'm gonna put some trees. Super subtle, but good way to start until you know where you're going to end up. Let's see, because I'm not even sure I want that there. But Easy fix if you don't. Put this back kind of. Oh, yeah, I was painting in there earlier, so there's some wet stuff. Oops. I think I'll uh, stick mostly the background for now. I just kind of make this up as I go, so.
thinking out loud, basically. so it's nice just to not think about it and try not to create patterns it'll start looking really fakey really fast just trying to get the size of these right super light just going in with a glaze <coughs> excuse me Start making them go with the flow a little better. Actually, if this one's going to be on this hill, probably a good thing to start with is making these little. Cypressy or Junipers. I like that. I think I'll just uh, tappy, tappy, tappy. Tap in a little bit. Because it is transparent, it's not really covering the background too much, which is actually kind of good right now. trying to make it not look like a popsicle stick. <clears throat> switch to another one because before I hit play on this I forgot to make more of the one I was using. So I switched to a one that I already had made but which is completely different than the one I've been using. So it's working. It's got the paint wet so quite enough to work. starts happening I'm gonna have everything on the horizon which is good at the beginning but Background. 
which I should maybe be putting this one in right now. I should be working in the background. It's all right. I'm just kind of give myself a, an idea of where I'm going, and where I'm going to end up. Direction is going to be. This is right there, so it should. This way, I'm probably feel. Just going to knock it out. It keeps it everything from looking flat. Like it's just sticking out of nothing. So, this one, for example, I'm just using my really dark blue there. Most of my shadow colors because my my light's mainly orangey, so I'm going in between. Orange and uh, or go for a middle ground like a mauve color between purple and blue. It's gonna it's a complement to the color of the light. Backing into my other desk. <clears throat> eh, don't hate it. <clears throat> Try and lighten up some of these background ones. They look really good over here. I got them a little. So I'm using basically the same, same mixture. So I'm just doing a little cheat to make these other <clears throat> other trees look like they're going to be in the background. These are just stump roughing in the, the darks of the trees. I'm not doing any detail. Not that there's going to be almost any detail on these at all, but <clears throat> just roughing it in. Uh, all the darks and shadows of it, and then I'll come back. Definitely a tree trunk wouldn't be blue, uh, uh, or at least that's not how most people think about it. <laughs> Shadow side of the bark might be. Maybe you have a dark trees tree and it is blue. I don't know. Make dark Susie looking stuff. Actually, a lighter kind of blue in here that's just happens to be a little bit more opaque, so it covers up the. So I'm seeing less of what was behind it shining through because it is just a glaze. I kind of like that anyway. It'll be more detailed in the uh, shadow color. It'll be a little bit more saturated. And This is just bouncing around, bouncing around, and I, uh, I tend to try and use whatever color I have on my brushes and in many places where it makes sense so that I'm not constantly loading my brush or changing my colors. It's also good repetition of color so that you're not, uh, so that <clears throat> everything kind of coalesces and you don't get a weird color scheme. It really doesn't matter if I made the as red and the sky green and stuff as you uh yeah. make your, all the colors harmonize right and make it make sense but it is funny i was thinking about that yesterday about the context of colors like if you did paint red grass most people wouldn't believe it at first because they're not used to seeing green grass 
but with this red sky and you're seeing green, which in real life you wouldn't be seeing that much green, it would be washed out, it would be <clears throat> almost silhouetted. If it was green at all, it would be like sap green, like deep sap green. Not here. Here it's like I'm treating the ground like an ocean reflecting the light. Why? Because it's not that. Doesn't have to make sense. Like, unless this isn't even like real rock detail. I'm just smashing in lights and darks and creating a sense of illusion that tells you it's a mountain, even though it's great again, very Dr. Seuss. Or Dolly, or, or whatever. It's a lot of artists I've Decades I've been doing this, I suppose. A lot of our influences, for sure. I have tens of thousands of them. As we all do. Do, 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 do. There's less paint on the brush. I've burned most of it out. It's really good because I'm in a blown out area. The sun's coming through and it's blowing out all these colors. So these shadows will be extra, extra, extra light. If you can even see anything at all. I'm going to take most of the paint off. My bristles. Scrubby, scrubby. And basically, I'm Doing what you call scumbling here. Just rotating and basically torturing my paintbrush. Because I am really hard on paintbrushes. Trust me. I've got hundreds of them in here. 90% of them are completely, I would say, ruined. And this paintbrush, once it's ruined or the bristles are splayed out, great. Awesome brush for doing foliage if that's what you want to do, or if you're just doing characters and textures or or something. Whatever works. I'm only doing this because I <clears throat> I basically repainted well, this is a two year painting meaning I had it finished two years ago and I was never completely like happy with it which phew, that's impossible with any painting but I decided I liked the painting enough that I wanted to give it a two year refresh for a couple of years and it hadn't sold after being at a couple of shows and it had taken up a huge amount of my wall space I thought it needed a fresh coat of paint quite literally yes pun intended what I'm doing and like 95% of the original painting is completely painted at this point and I'm actually kind of getting closer and closer to the end on this so I just uh, since I wiped out everything I had here I have to, to reestablish some stuff and I really didn't have much in the way of trees in this it was a little naked looking before so it's kind of kind of fun sex it up a little bit make it look like somebody lives here or wants to live here <clears throat> need to have a place for a bird to check out the sunset <clears throat> somewhere to perch and I really I do so so many different kinds of art but it's not all just Rainbows and Skittles, it's uh, actually quite enjoy uh, doing a lot of really dark work, which, psh, funny enough, even though it's really colorful, this piece behind here is a long term, very, very dark uh, painting. I mean, long term, I've been working on for a really long time. The top part that you can barely see is in an actual really rough state right now, it's funny. Darken it up 
it's, e it's easy to go darker or a bit lighter with a glaze anyway. Uh, I mean, sure, you can wipe it out, but I mean, I'm working on details with it. I'm not like glazing in a huge area or something. Like putting yellow over here and trying to wash all this out like it's fog or something, and then taking a, a rag and wiping it away to get different effects. That's not what I'm doing here. Even though I am wiping away. Still is. So why would you what kind of detail to talk about? <laughs> but this thing is uh, pretty bad, uh, so it's working really good for I I've, I've tortured it in those few days. I've used it extensively for a lot of things, so tappy, scrubby, scumbly, scumbly stuff. It's really bad for your brushes. Um, this is a, a bristle. I don't care. Brush is a tool. Like, if it's broke a new one, you use this one for something else. Even if I ripped every hair of the sucker, I would still flip it around and you can use it for other stuff. Swirling paint around, scratching, uh, going in here. And this isn't going to work on this so well, but I use that technique a lot. And, and uh, see me coming in here with Q-tips a whole it's kind of, uh, I mean, I've been doing it for years, but I've been doing it for a whole lot more in the last, last several months. It's become like an invaluable painting tool, basically. I'm using my Q-tips almost as much as my paintbrushes, especially when you're going in and doing detail. Alright, so I want this tree to be a little bit more forward. It's going to be on this plane. It's going to be really, really blurry in the background. It's okay. Now it looks like there's bushes behind here. Didn't need to do that, but uh, that's what happened. But when you're a painter, you're basically uh, <coughs> a magician. You're lying. You're doing sleight of hand. You're pretending that you painted all the bristles, all the leaves, and you didn't. up so it pulls it forward. Not too bad, not too bad. Totally the wrong color to be coming in here and doing what I'm doing here. I'm trying to push this big old back so this this plane of this hill pushes forward. I'm only talking because there's no other freaking sound in here besides the birds. It's like four four thirty in the morning or something. So all I can hear is birds, and I I, I didn't think I had to play music, and I'm not gonna play anything. I'm gonna get copyrighted for so copyright strike for us. There's plenty of free music out there. I'll find. Future endeavor yeah, for you know, future sessions. I'm just doing a test. This is the first time I've ever streamed on YouTube. So, well, tonight I have a couple of videos before this, but one upside down. So, yeah, trying to use the front facing camera and two things. One, the things didn't look very good. The camera, I mean, front facing cameras aren't really meant for this, and it, it was just orientated wrong. Couldn't figure out how to flip it, so I don't know. And I wanted it on that side. I didn't want to reverse it, so I don't want to flip the camera. Then because then it would have angled me out more in here than out there. <clears throat> That's kind of nice. I'm getting some really good detail through this. I, I didn't even notice. It's making this look way smooth, uh, which it is. It's it's not done. I was just trying to. 
make my pink horse look shaded right. I just I repainted this like three times in the last week, three times in the last two days basically. It's oil paint, but it's dry. I'm using mediums that uh, allow it to dry pretty much within hours, <clears throat> so, uh, several hours at most, and uh, that's working for me right now because I'm I'm not oil paint wet for any reason. In fact, I don't generally care about that that much. I just want it to stay a little lo uh, wet long enough for me to be able to blend it. You know, and uh, like acrylics, where unless you're using golden open acrylics, they stay wet for significantly longer, but most acrylics, they dry so fast that they're almost a pain in the butt. Like if you're doing uh, clouds or something, they can be a pain. Um, I, I've, I've learned my way around it. I can paint acrylic as well as I can in oil, basically. Most people probably couldn't even hold my two, two apart that much. Uh, most people couldn't. But uh, I, I prefer oil. Oil is definitely my baby. I've been doing it for over 25 years, so. At least professionally for 25 years. So, you know, I've been selling oil paintings for that long. <laughs> Maybe not oil paints, but I've been selling art that long. Oil paint, maybe 20 years. I've been selling them. <clears throat> I started doing this probably early aughts. If you discount the fact that I used to paint oil paint to Bob Ross when I was like 13. If you count that, then it goes back another, another 10 years. <clears throat> I did several of those, and they came out fine. Just gave it up for a while, got interested in doing airbrush, got pretty good at that, and then got arthritis, or had it, just didn't have it to a crippling factor yet. Alright, so I don't know. I'm confused some of my stuff on here. I think I made a mistake earlier. I know I made a mistake earlier. This brush is stiffer than a board. This thing is kind of screwed up. I think I left my medium in it. Uh, that's a big mistake. I'll probably in the stream. I'm just testing it out anyway to see how this camera's going to look. This is just me goofing around. I doubt anybody will ever see this. And it needs to be two people in history who ever do. It's okay. It's just the beginning. got a stream I'm doing for some students later, so I've got a couple sessions I have to do live later. So that's why I'm doing this YouTube thing. I've been meaning to do it for like five years, I don't know, and I never got around to it. You know, I started an Etsy store in like 2011, and it does. And it feels like yesterday. And that, was, <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> 2011 was a long time ago. If I had started my YouTube channel back in 2011 when I freaking intended to, I would be freaking knowing what I'm doing by now with the YouTube thing. I mean, right now I'm like literally just winging it. I'm like, hey, can I stream with my camera? My broken camera at that. I can't even charge the sucker. I have to put on the, the cord. I have to plug it into the web. I use a wireless charger. Lucky me, it's an S6, Gal Galaxy S6 from Samsung, and it was, I believe, one of their first phones, one of the first phones, I don't know, maybe there was a note before it that had it, but it has wireless Qi charging, which is lucky for me, because it's the only way I can charge this sucker. And I'll get a new phone. But, uh... I don't believe in replacing anything until, uh... I need to. to work conservative, but I'm conservative in that sense. Use what you got. Be happy you had it. It's a good philosophy on life. If you can have a degree of uh, having something better, great. But I try not to be wasteful. I try to even if I move in and start doing something else, I'm going to 
this fucking. Maybe try and use up what I really had. Oh, I kind of like that. Just out a little bit. It's kind of nice. Get a better shape. And the elbow's kind of scratched. I think that's alright. Scratched it down to the, the grain that was under it. Which is actually kind of nice. I'll leave it like that. I'm just going to soften that scratched edge there. That's fine. This is just shadows and basically just laying in orientations. This probably won't change hugely. Come in and highlight them. Some of these are going to be an optical illusion. The trees in through here. And then go into the, into the background a little bit. And uh, I'll leave this one stuck. Or unhighlighted. It'll just look like they're in the shadow of this mountain. Right now, I really don't have a plan. I'm going around and fixing things that are bugging me. That's it. That's painting, basically. I should be good at it. I'm gonna just... This edge is getting lost, but I don't know if I care right now. Alright. But, you know, fixing stuff you notice. That's a huge, huge difference there. Ninety percent when I'm in probably can't even see. It's, it's so subtle, so small, and I need higher quality for it to really pop. But all right, you know, that's cool. It looks like that. How my brain works. See, doing YouTube's a natural for me, and the reason is because I constantly talk to myself anyway. Really, the only difference is that I have something pointed at my back. <clears throat> and, uh, the project I'm working on at the time. Enough. I love doing these fancy-esque, kind of like, loosey-goosey landscapes, if you want to call it loosey-goosey. I consider it loosey-goosey. It's pretty thick. I mean, this is half an inch thick. Of... Here's the thickest part of this whole painting. It's it's thick. <clears throat> it's very thick. Like these brush strokes. I mean, sort of layers. They're like cement now. They've been drying for a while, a couple years. I uh, as I said, I'm just going in and basically repainting the whole sucker. You're just kind of painting the butt when you have a bunch of impasto. If you decide to make changes, like I did, you see impasto over here. That's because I had something completely different going on here. I decided to completely change it on this uh, round. On this round. So I went in, wiped out what I had here, recomposed this whole area, and uh, panned over it. But you know, it's okay. Yeah, this what was there before is still there. You just don't see anything but the texture of it. You know what? It's kind of cool. Who cares? Just makes the whole thing more interesting. And through here, it's just the whole thing is very impressionistic. It's intended to be. I love impressionism. It's kind of become like uh, I'm detail oriented anyway. But like every single like thing on this painting, everything is like either a little freaking micro. Dot or a small swipe where you can still see the brush strokes or, or something of that nature. I, as I get older, I just start finding that more technical, smoother paintings are kind of boring and neat, which is funny because I've got a bunch of them going. Like, you won't see it, but down here, behind this thing, I've got an umber, an umber underpainting. It's very technical. It's, uh, it's painting in Flemish technique, and uh, you guys can see that when, I, when, you, when you can see that you know, when I get around to showing it. Because I'll be working on that too. Um, completely different style. It's a really dark piece in terms of it's a skull basically in a top hat for a, for a buddy in his uh, his motorcycle club. So it's exciting. It's fun. I'm really happy with how that piece is coming out, and I'll never stop doing that stuff. That honestly, for me, for the most part, I really more enjoy doing these uh, loosey goosey, fun, <clears throat> nonsensical. joy. Paintings. It's supposed to make you feel good. I, 
I've done so many dark, dirty, <clears throat> scary to some people paintings, and they're really psychological. Most of my paintings are allegorical in a sense. Uh, in meaning, I'm trying to tell a human story. I don't mean allegorical in the sense of like uh, religion, like telling an alle a religious allegory. my I'm trying to thought here. A lot of things have a lot of point to them. Uh, this painting, it's been a good time explaining that to people. Everything about the composition uh, helps tell a story, and the composition is telling a story here. It's a feeling of movement. Everything I have is a feeling of movement, and everything's always twisted. So, funny story. I'm just making sure it's still going. Yeah, funny story about this. Why did I paint? <laughs> Basically, uh, the sunrise, I guess, is called my traditional sunrise. I just decided to throw these in for fun, for effect. Why did I do this? Well, it's kind of my style anyway, but it was fifth or sixth grade. Doing art class, you know, you basically had, you know, whatever uh, art class at that time, you know, everybody did. It's basically just like an hour of your day every once in a while where you, you got to eat glue sticks. Yeah, I did. I was not a glue stick eater, I'm kidding, but yeah. some kids did do that. And uh, now they're probably, uh, their kids are probably eating Tide Pods now, so good on them. But I uh, had a teacher tell me that never paint the sun. You've never seen a professional painting or a professional artist ever put a sun in an image. And such poppycock. Give me a break. <laughs> I can explain how that's wrong for like a billion reasons. Uh, first off, one of my favorite painters, Turner, uh, yeah, that was it's uh, uh, Henry Mallard, Henry Mallard Joseph William Turner, one of the longest names in freaking history. I probably got some of that wrong, but but Turner put the sun in his paintings constantly, you know, so, uh, case in point. And even a better example, look at this, Van Gogh. And yeah, I am so inspired by Van Gogh. I'm just trying to make something as fun as Van Gogh and Monet mm -hmm. and, and, and any of the Pissarro or Renoir or any of the Impressionists. I'm trying to have as much fun but throw fantasy into it, like a... Monet was more, I would say, realistic, but fantasy-ish, in the sense, you know, he was amping up his colors, he was making the world more beautiful than it was, but he wasn't really changing his composition in, in uh, the fantastical sort of way. He wasn't, like, warping things, he wasn't throwing rays, twisting off the sun, he was basically just doing his impressionistic version of nature, whereas Van Gogh was doing the same thing, but Van Gogh took a much more, I think, uh, I don't know, uh, literal approach, I suppose, you know? <clears throat> you know, if he saw the sun, he showed the light coming, shining from the sun uh, in heavy strokes, you know? You could feel the rays of the sun basically popping out the canvas, um, which isn't to say I think he's a uh, Monet. There is no better. I like them both. They're both like my great-great-great-grandparents in the sense that uh, I've learned a lot from them, you know. Especially if you you go online, you're lucky enough to find some, like, high-res imagery or have seen their works in person, which I've, I've seen both of their works in person quite a bit, you know. When you see them in person, they're actually a lot messier than you would expect. You know, you see them in a picture on the internet or in a book, you tend to see that your expectations of what a painting would be like in reality is either going to be affected negatively or positively uh, based on your expectation. It's one of the oldest things in the book, and it's one of my favorites that disappointment is directly proportional to expectation. It's a great saying. It's like if you think you're great you didn't like it, you're going to hate that movie that much more. And vice versa. If you had no expectation and it tickled you and tickled the 
fancy and you like it, then fuck, you're gonna totally be into it. Alright, so, and I cussed, I didn't mean to. I'm gonna try to avoid that. It's just, psh, it's my nature, I cuss a lot. Oh, yeah, well, that's kind of an almost nuclear. Awesome. I like it. Really? No. But it's fun. It's true in this like neon pink color on this. I found that this bottom, this ray here as a curve was a little boring. So, yeah. I don't know. It's just a big sandbox. This is my open world. I like playing video games. I like doing a lot of things. I like reading. I like doing uh, writing. I like sculpting. Sculpting is another huge thing that I'm going to have on my channel. It's going to be on my channel constantly, but it's not going to be for quite a while. Because, for certain reasons, I need to be set up better for that, and I need to get further with certain projects before I can show them. So, that's basically it. I like that color. really bright. So I got some Lucas primaries in oil, uh, 200 milliliter tubes. And uh, this is that magenta. Now, my favorite magenta so far that I've used is actually uh, Ornament Rose and Windsor and Newton 200 milliliter. And this is artist grade. It's good stuff. I like it a lot. I like them both a lot. Uh, I'm actually using Lucas. I've only had this stuff about two weeks, and I'm actually quite enjoying it. It's a little sloppier than Windsor and Newton for the most part. It's a little runnier. It's a little softer. Um, not good or bad. I would prefer being thicker, honestly, but that's easy to fix. Just stick it out on a piece of cardboard. Use a piece of cardboard as a palette and let the uh, cardboard suck the oil out of the paint for a day, and you'll be good to go. <clears throat> but this is actually a much brighter color, but the reason this up is because this Lucas Magenta is a primary. If you're looking at it in terms of, no, not red, green, uh, no, <laughs> green, red, yellow, blue, okay, those are the primaries, but not when you're mixing with paint. Usually it doesn't work out that well. You have to usually use the printer scale, meaning Cyan, magenta, lemon yellow, and black. That's uh so when you're working with paint, you want to think like a paint machine, which is something I've uh, I've always used a very limited palette for the most part. Uh, I mix most of my colors from from primaries. I'm just getting more refined in my primaries or getting pure primaries. I found that uh, this primary I ordered beta because primary and the permanent rose. The permanent rose is pretty good, but it throws some things off. Um, like if you're trying to make a a purple with it, it works fine, but I don't know. It's just always a work in progress. Funny thing though, when you get things shipped in the mail, especially something that's fragile, no matter how well they pack it, Yep. Yeah, I've just had one of these tubes. I got four tubes of Lucas to try them out, and one of them had a big hole in it. And they just taped it and put a paper towel over it and taped it. It's fine. I've had that happen before. Not the end of the world. Nothing is the end of the world until the end of the world. Most things in life are spilled milk. When you're young, things are a big deal. If you've gotten older, you start to realize your experience that you can priority much. If you're still alive, you're pretty much okay. <laughs> you'll, you'll figure it out. This is fun. Didn't really have actually any whatsoever when I started the stream. I'm just testing this program. 
orientating my camera correctly. I'm gonna have fun on breaking the handle. It's just too, too boring. It, it's a smooth blunt here. And most of the paint isn't very smooth. So, yeah. It doesn't look great. You gotta mess it up, beat it up, take it into a dark alley, and kick it in the shin. <clears throat> And I'm working very dry. Just dry brush. So if I want it to be a little wetter when I apply it, I just use my medium. And I do that actually all day long. In fact, yesterday, it's funny, day, yesterday and the day before, yesterday to me, I stayed up for over 48 hours. It sucked. Or not 48 hours. It's like, it's just short of 48 hours. And 